what is up my good friend so this is the second video in building the api endpoint for flask so in this video we'll be setting up our models so we'll just start with authentication so this is it because we'll be using graphql out so i want you to do some few things so let us first start by installing flask graphql out so just open terminal or cmd or whatever you're using depending on your os then just paste that to install graphql out and it will install python json web token and whatever because we'll be using uh, basically we'll be using web token to authenticate users so go back inside your config then you see inside our settings so far we need to set up our application to accept us to authenticate so the first thing we need to do is we need to set up dot config then inside our configs we need to add one thing which is json web token and then secret key so this secret key as you see by the name you need to keep it secret so that is why in production you might want to use something like an environment but inside here just do it anything so i'll just start typing anything like i want so another thing we want to do is we want to set like how after how long does our web token expires so app.config dot just and then just set refresh expiry length which in our case it's normally in minutes so we will say just 30 minutes refresh exp time and then access length dot config then access exp length let us set it to 10 and then finally up config and then just the json web secret key json web key so this is the name <coughs> that your header secret key will be called so in this case i'll call it bearer so that is normally what people are used to front-end developers and most people whenever they're using web token but you could call it even json web token or a name that somebody cannot know <laughs> but i guess i'll just call it better so basically what i mean over here is let me show you real fast authorization so what do you prefix your key with you could say json web token and then just the key that you will be sent on login and but in our case it's prefixed with our bearer because that is what we defined over there so that is basically what this name is for so another thing you might just want to add is because we'll be using our, our authentication being from the graphql out then just add graphql let me, we first need to import from graph from flask graph in out then import graphql out so this is our will be taking care of our authentication so just say add this to our app so basically that is it our the authorization will be using that one so that inside our headers and wherever then will be expecting this another thing we want to do now because we are building on graphql authentication then we want to add app dot add your url rules and then the path which in our case will be just graphql so that is i guess that is a good name and then another thing what is our view function so view function in our case is graphql views which we need to import from flask and graphql just import graphql view because we'll be using this just come and say this and then it's as a view that is it and then just over here you want to say that it's a graphql then just the schema what what is our schema we haven't built it yet but we'll do it 
So we just say schema equals to schema graphql is equals to true. So this basically is something you want. Whenever you are in production, you want it to be false. So I'll just make a file for from schema import schema. So if you already don't know GraphQL, then just know that all our views, all our functions specifically are controlled by something called schema. GraphQL and app endpoints are accessible via one URL. So schema is basically will be just making decisions between what data you are trying to fetch or what more or what you are trying to update so basically that is it so we have to make a schema to do that so inside here i'll make a new file just call it schema dot py so this schema will contain our schemas but before we reach here let us go and build our models so let us build our authentication application so just over here make a new package out so basically this will contain everything about our authentication models and also schemas so just come over here create a new python file and call it models so we'll start with our models first so just over here we need to import some few things we need to import the base config database so this is what we'll be using to define our model so we need to import this inside every time we are making a new model then we will need to import this but first we need to import everything for co making columns and defining the data types for columns so from sql alchemy just import let's say for now everything and then from sql alchemy from config dot database then we need to import that base I hope you already know how to make models because basically what we are doing here is the same as making models in normal graph in normal flask only that we are extending from the base instead of the db.models like you normally do so just say user and then in this case it's a base it's extending from the base so whenever you are using default sql alchemy then you always need to define the table name because that is something that flask normally does for you when you use the extend thing from the flask made one but over here we'll be making our own so you need to define the table name so in, in our case we just call it user and then we need to make the primary key which is column and then it's type integer and then we just define it to be primary key to be true so i hope you know how to make this is basically how to make so i'll just make this table very fast and then just explain what happened okay you see i've set up this user model so basically what this model does is it has id it has username which always must be unique email which must always be unique and then it has a password and then the password created the created time which is basically when the account was created last login first name and last name so that is basically you see it has things like i i almost copied what django normally has like so that i think that is always normally complete and i like it so we have this user model so the next thing we needed to do is at least we can make what is always return whenever you will try printing this so we can just say string and then just say return in our case we can just return username so we can just say f and then self dot username mm, now we need a way to be able to create user so let us go and create a schema for creating user so open inside in out and python file create a new one called schema dot py so basically schema here will allow us to query and also make mutation so mutation if you don't know graphql is a way for updating database like when you are editing or when you are creating a new one so first of all we need to import graphene import graphene so this will give us access to graphene data types the second thing is from flask 
let us just see how we can create a user and then we will import what we need so let us create a class for registering so let us just call it register as it does and then it's graphene dot mutation so this is of type mutation as i was saying class arguments no arguments so let's say let's define class arguments so this class arguments allows us to define the data that you want our mutation to accept which in our case we know it will accept email it will accept username it will accept password one and password two so these are basically what we want to accept so for username all of them are strings so it's just graphene dot string and then if it's if you must if they are required then you could just say required is equal to true which in our case we know they always must be passed and then just copy them and that is it so password one and password two is basically you want to make sure that user passes the password twice correctly so that you know that they know that that is the password they want to use and then always in mutation there is something it must have it must have a class a, a function or method called mutation mutate actually not mutation i'm really sorry i just find myself that saying that every now and then and let us just say that this is type class method so that we can class method so that over here it can allow us to use cls and then another thing is because we will be using we can just say pass that to be something like and something we'll not be using and then just say info and then another thing is now from here we pass the arguments that are our application is expecting which in our case is email we expect username we expect password one and also password two i hope it's clear we just these arguments normally come just after these three first three arguments so it's user name email username password the order must not follow what is here because the names will be from here so you can just use any order you want and whenever you you are creating a user you want first to make sure that the email they are giving is a good email so i'll create a fun i'll create something inside here called helper this will be helping us to make sure that everything is always in good format and then inside here help us you want to import read because we'll be checking regex to make sure that it's type email and then the regex for checking email is something like this so you could just decide to do it to have it like that so this is regex for email you can just check email in google and you will get it if you don't know how to write that and then just check email so this in this function will be passing email and then we will be checking if email matches this so we'll just say if re dot search and then the first thing is the reject argument is rejects and the second argument is just the email in our case so this will simply check our email against that and if it's true then we just return true it will either be returning true or false depending on is it matching or it did not match so if it match then return true else just return false false so then you just clean that and then just go use this over here check email if it if not check email then over here you could make something to return you can say error so this is a way you return values actually so you make over here everything that comes over here are things that you can return which in our case we can say error is just graphing dot they still follow the data types over here then you can say just dot string so it ca you can ret always return string so you can just say register then you can say just return register and then just pass the error make sure you pass correct email so just to make sure you pass correct email import this name from 
okay i did cut that so you can just say check over here and then where was it we want it to import over here from config import check and then the last thing we want to do is make sure that the password one and the password two is the same so if password one is not equal to password two then again return the same error and just say if password did not match so if the two password did not match then just say password did not match else if both of these are true then we know that we can now create our user so you can just say so let us call it new user then just say that new user is user so we need to import that user import this name from model so we define it first to have the fields we need so the first thing is username which is in our case is the username the second one is email and then password so you see password is normally saved in you don't want to save just password in plain text so you want to encrypt the password so we'll just say import with the help of this so import workzec security import the generate password hash so this will generate password hash from our password and the second argument you need to pass is the method you want to use which is in our case we want to use sha256 there are several methods to hash password you can go check those and you you just find which you think you will love and take it so you you create your email username password and you could again just say date to be now but i guess those are things you might want to add but i will just leave them and then finally you want to db dot session and then add user so okay in normal cases when you're using the db the normal way then you will be doing session depending on what you named over here you could be doing db dot session and then just add and then commit but over here because our session db already we defined its session then you will just be calling db session dot add and then the thing you want to add is new user and then just db dot session let us import this first import this from config that way and then just db session dot commit so this way it, this is when you do this this will not be committed this will only be existing inside your flask memory but if you do db dot commit then it updates the sql so you must always remember to do that this db session as you can see was imported from our config so that we can use it after you've created user you could just be saying that because we needed this to be unique as you saw we said unique so it could return exception if user tried creating user maybe twice so you could just put all of these inside a try catch statement so you could just say try and then accept and then what we are expecting is integrity error which in our case we need to import from exceptions inside our so import this from sql ikemi integrity error don't import from here because this is sql light but we are writing into sqlite via sql academy so make sure you are importing from this so import that one and then just say as e and then we could return that return error register and then the error in this case is just the e dot origin like where the, the error origin so i'll just get that very fast just place it over here so this will get the error origin which will be the message that is more relevant but you might want to at least do it in a much better way but that will help us in this case if no if the try catch did not get any error then you might want to return successful message which in this case you can just return register and then the success which i know we've not defined to be true so it's, this could be either true or false and then message you which in our case you could say user created so let us try this just add this and say over here to be message and then success to be graphene.boolean so this will return either true or false depending on whether the user already exists 
or was not created successfully so let us make another one for authentication and i will just do that very fast because i think you've already seen the trend and then i'll explain so you see over here i made a class for authentication which is basically for registration and then you see it takes in graph in the, it, it checks in email and password if you would like to register your user's using username then you can say here to be username and then i'm returning access token refresh token and error if there is an error and and then i have the muted so you see over here i'm just getting the username and fetching the user you see i'm checking getting the email and then i'm fetching and then just getting the first one because you want to get one and then check i check the email if not check email i think these i did put in the wrong place because i should have brought this up here you want to first check email and then say that the email is valid then you can proceed else return that invalid email and then you get the user and then you want to check the password you remember that our password was hashed over here during the registration that means that it's not the plain password so you want to check password hash against your password so you are checking the user password against the password so we need to import these and it's from the same place we imported the one for hashing now we are checking password hash so we've imported it over there and then we just return if the password does not exist if the user does not exist with that password then we just say the bad username or password you don't want to tell them that the password is wrong because if somebody was trying to guess them then they'll just be knowing that the email already exists so i want only the password so you give them an error that isn't so clear so that they can just give in the correct credentials and then we have the access token and then we have refresh token but these we are importing them from somewhere we are getting access token from user id and it will always be hashed according to the secret key we gave over inside our settings this one you will always be hashed following this if you change this in the middle of your application your access tokens might just get wrong so create access token so the first thing you want to do is you want to import this from sql graph e, graphql out and also this so whenever when we input we installed the graphql out then it came with this so this is basically for creating access token and also refresh token so refresh token is something that you will you can use to refresh token in the middle of user authentication and the create access token is for creating an access token so finally we can make again a method for refreshing token so i'll do that very fast so you see over here again i've made another class for mutation but this way now this is a way it expects refresh token as a string it over here so i'm getting refresh token and then whenever user passes refresh token then i'm getting the current user following the refresh token so this is done basically by this is all of these things will be done by our application so you just import this refresh token from over here so you see graphql out again again comes with mutation json web token refresh required so when every method that you require refresh token then you use this so this will require you to pass refresh token so and then another one is mutation so you're getting the current user following the current ref the refresh token and then you just create the create a new token from the user because you remember that the user was always by i created by id so that is it basically what happens and then you just create and you return the refresh token if the user existed with hashing for the id that the user gave so we finally need to register this mutation so so uh, you can make any you can call it anything but this has to be graphene.object and then object it's graphene.object type and then over here you pass the names of things you want to be the to be calling in the front end for instance i have three of them i have for registration so i could just say registration you call, i call it register and then you just say the 
class you pass there dot field we have for authentication which in our case i could just call it out and then just say just call the authentication dot mutate field and then we finally have for refresh token which we could just say it refresh mutate dot field so that those these are the mutations we have so we finally need to able to be able to access this because you see we just created them but our application doesn't know even that these out exist as of now so that is why there was this thing called schema over here we where was it so you see we were registering something called schema so this schema will basically be defining everything we need to pass so and we know that it should be inside our schema so come over here just import just import out dot schema so and then we we need to pass let's just say schema is equals to graphene dot schema so graphene dot schema and then this can take in queries and also mutation and also subscription but right now we have only mutation so just i'll say mutation is in this case it's graph it's it's from out dot schema dot mutation so i'll just say dot mutation and then just remove that schema part so this will basically get a mutation from out dot schema dot mutation and register to our schema which is basically where is it which is basically what we are trying to assess over here so how do we know that this is working so let us refresh the page and hopefully nothing bad happened from schema import schema no module name schema okay i did from i need to say from dot schema not from schema it's from dot schema so it was looking for a module called schema which does not exist so it's from our dot schema and our application is running so let us open that just go first let me remove the app so dot js this so that and then we know that it should be graph ql and then just refresh the page and you see we get this nice thing over here no schema available why is there no schema available so i guess that error is because we have not defined our queries and mutation itself cannot exist without queries so i'll just make a dummy query over here so i'll just say class and then just say query i'm doing it inside config schema which is basically where we will be putting every all will be combining all our queries and just over here i'll just say it's graphene dot object object type and then just pass message to be okay to be let's say it's graphene dot string and then we need to register these queries over here just come over here and just say queries to be that out to be our query yes. let us refresh this page and go check out okay now we are getting that let us go to graph ql now you see we are we have queries and mutations so mutations have register out and refresh and our queries has the message so making mutations for instance for registering user is really easy just go over here mutation and we can say mutation to define mutation then you have to put it this way i mean like this so mutation and then inside over there is where you define your mutations for instance you can say register and then you just pass email to be let's say km.email.com and then just let's say password one to be one two three to be like king and then just say what do we want to return we want to return either message or error or success and then let us try running error no is so it's over here it's error no so we have to put this to be error i guess that is what everything was going wrong and then let us try 
it once more refresh this try make sure you pass correct email so my email is not correct why okay it's because yeah <laughs> so you see i think we've already seen what happens when email is not correct let us try now again so you see we are getting error no such table uh, things like that so that is because we forgot to make migration so very fast let us go uh, let me show you how we make migrations so open terminal or cmd if you installed the lmbic then you are fine so just or if you do not then make sure you install it i'll do it real fast quick over here it's lmbic the lmbic dot in it so it's that way and then it will create a new file called migration so if you see over here i have a new file called migrations and i have a new one a new file again called lmbic dot in it so these are the two things you will get so the reason i was telling you to do this is because first thing you see it just created an db sqlite over here so go over here first thing i want you to do is go inside your alembic dot ini file and here you will need to define the drivers to your database which in our case is basically sqlite and then just the same way three thing three slashes and then just the name which is in our case db.sqlite so this name has to be exactly what you define inside your configuration because this will be creating migrations for things that our application will be using so after you've done that then again come over here we need to define one more thing so go inside your migrations the folder that was just created and you have an env.py file so this is basically where we need to set our configuration for our models so basically go over to my my from you see over here there are some few things that have been disabled like target mirror data so this will basically be getting mirror data for your application let us go inside config let us create a new file new file new python file let us call it no, no let us call it models <laughs> .py so this file will contain all our models no matter where we place them then we must import them over here so just say from out import models or just do import out.models this way we will have access where for all your models you might want to import them over here so that we will be having a base which is basically by me saying base is what we define inside our database that has been updated for all our applications because we will want to get metadata for them so and then just simply go back to your env and over here just enable this and enable this and then you remove this one which was saying target metadata being none and then just say from config dot model from config just import models so this will get all the models and just say that our models in this case is just that so it will be model dot base so and then if you've done that you will just need to make migrations just do this basically test so lmb revision and then auto generate and then what do you want to call your migration file that will be created these are basically the heads so you can just call it initial and just hit enter this will create migrations for our case it's saying that module config the model has no attribute base so i think models i can say from out dot models import everything and try again so you see you will be doing this way so that you can import base from there so if we go on the inside our migrations versions expand you see here we get a migration folder that are being created for us for upgrade 
and it contains all the fields for the user which in our case is only the one only model we have right now finally you want to upgrade these and then just do lmbic and then upgrade heads and then just pass what do you want to upgrade just say all the heads that are inside our versions and it will just create database for us and if we can open this database file i am using pycharm so over here i can access the database so you see if i expand main you see i have access to user so you see user has all the fields that we defined so that is how we'll be managing migrations all through all for our models so now we can go back so let us run this you see now we have user created and user was created successfully and we have true they are being true so let us try authenticating let's just say out now and then we know that we only need to pass a few things over here we need a password and yeah one thing is access token refresh token and then error if any error occurs and you see when we just did that we got everything over here so basically now we've been able to handle authentication and we've seen how we create models so the next video we might just be moving faster because i think everything now is clear so guys if you love this video then please don't forget to subscribe and like so have a nice time and let us meet in the next video